and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a very exciting video because I'm gonna go through all of the products that I've had pan on so far in 2020. I have quite a lot of things to go through. I think I have over 25 items. I didn't count them up exactly but somewhere around there. But before we jump into the products, if you are new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you in the family. But let's just jump into the products. So like 90% of everything I have is eyeshadow, so I'm going to start with three items that I have that aren't eyeshadows. And the first one I have is this one, which is from Becca, and this is one of their under eye brightening correctors in the shade light to medium. Um, I hit pan on this earlier this year um, in a project, and I really, really like this, um, but I haven't reached with much since I rolled out of that project. And I just feel like it's not an everyday essential for me, although um, this really helped me out in winter because um, my under eyes got really really dry and this is very moisturizing so I think this is something that I will reach for again when we get into um, colder months again but I do really love this product. Next up we have a blush and this one is Coralista from Benefit. I also hit pan on this for a project uh, earlier this year. I already had tons of use on this uh, from before this year and when I rolled it into the month it didn't take too long to hit pan on this. Um, I also did actually use up another blush so I have gotten quite a good use out of my blush collection so far this year. Uh, but as you know blushes are very very hard to hit pan on so I am very excited to have a pan on one of my blushes uh, in my collection. Then the last and final item that I have is my Chanel bronzer and this is the Soleil Tan de Chanel uh, and this is the old version since um, I bought this they have released a new version which um, I heard that the form isn't the same of which is a shame because this product is beautiful and um, again I had this into a project and I had pan it on it that way um, and this took quite a long time to hit pan on and again I've had this for a while as well um, but I do really really love it uh, although it is a bit too light of a bronzer for me now in summer if you have this in your collection you know what it's like and I would really recommend this but since the formula has changed I can't really do that anymore I really wish the Chanel changed this back to the old formula with this one but uh, for now I'm happy to have it in my collection still so now let's move on to the eyeshadows uh, and I'm gonna start with my single eyeshadows and I have two Colourpop Super Shock Shadows. The first one is Wattles, which I had panned on very early on in this year. This was included in my Pandas eyeshadows, and that is the pan right there. With my Super Shock Shadows, what I always try to do is wear them down evenly before hitting pan, so that's what the kind of pan you will see in these. This is a beautiful transition shade. I really, really enjoyed wearing this, and I feel like I'm definitely potentially wanting to pan this in the future, because I loved using this when I had it in my Pandas eyeshadows. The other super shock shadow that I have is this one, which is eye candy. Um, this one I had in my Partners in Cream project pan. I uh, used to warn you most of my uh, pans will be from projects because that's kind of how I focus in on products. So this is what it looks like. Um, I wore down this a bit more than I did with Waddles. And I do like this one, but it's not my favorite. Um, it took me quite a while to hit pan on in that project because I just didn't reach for it that much. Um, I potentially want to declutter this in the future but for now I want to keep it in my collection but at the end of the year I might revisit this one to see if I want to declutter it then. The next eyeshadow that I have is this one which is single eyeshadow from NARS and this is one of the Christopher Kane collection in the shade Outer Limits. I had this into my uh, Roulette Pan collab and I hit pan on it that way. I really really love this eyeshadow, it's super stunning, it's like a orange to pink duochrome and it's very shimmery. So I do love this one but it can be a bit tricky to work with because it's very very sheer unless you apply it wet or build it up but other than that it is beautiful and I don't think you can get this anymore but I think there's tons of shades like this out there so um, I'm sure you can find something similar but that is the next shade that I hit pound. Then we have some single eyeshadows right here and um, that is in like a C palette and these are the three that I've hit pan on this year. The first one right here is Max Satin Taupe. I had this again in my Pandas eyeshadows and I hit pan on it that way. Um, I actually have decluttered this from my collection so it's no longer in my inventory and I just saved it for this video but I have decided to declutter it. I actually really loved using it in my Pandas eyeshadows but I don't reach for these um, kind of taupey greys that much anymore and this is a very very old eyeshadow so I just decided to declutter it because I did get a lot of use out of it and I feel like I got my money's worth and I 
yeah, was just done with that shade. So that is the first one. And then the middle one right here is actually a deposit eyeshadow from an Isadora palette. Uh, Isadora is a Scandinavian brand. And I think it's available in a couple of countries, um, mainly in Europe. But uh, this was just from that and I hit pan on this in my uh, Roulette Pan collab. And I mainly used this as an eye brow shade, but also as a crease one. I also already had a massive dip in this shade before hitting pan on it, so it didn't take too long to do. But I do really, really love this formula. Then the last single eyeshadow that I have is um, Peach Smoothie from Makeup Geek. This is actually my newest pan. I hit pan on this two days ago, so it's very, very fresh in my collection. I had this included in last month's Shop My Stash, so that's how I hit pan on it. But I absolutely love this shade, and if you want to hear more about it, just go and check out that video. I believe that will be my last video that I posted. And yeah, that is my last pan in my single eyeshadows. So now we are moving into eyeshadow palettes and I have these two here from I Heart Revolution. I'm going to start with this one which is the Rose Gold um, palette and I had pan on one of the shades this year. Um, I already had pan on this yellow shade but I had pan on this kind of rose gold shade um, earlier this year. So it was also part of my Pandas eyeshadows and these eyeshadow pans are really really easy to pan on because they are very shallow. Um, it's not my favorite formula and I think this is a palette that I will declutter eventually because I just don't love it. So um, I'm happy to have gotten some use out of it but I haven't really reached for it other than in my Pandas eyeshadows. So I'm not sure if I would recommend this palette palette uh, but if you are on a budget it is a decent quality palette. Then the next palette that I have is another one of the same uh, range which is the mini eyeshadow palettes from I Heart Revolution. This one is in the nudes. Uh, this one is actually my panda palette this year so if you um, are following that project and you don't want um, any spoilers you skip ahead a few seconds but this is what it looks like. I have tons of pan in this eyeshadow palette and I hit all of those pans this year. I will post an update on my panda palette really soon uh, but I have pan on this kind of uh, light shimmer shade. This this bronze shade, this champagne shade, this uh, brown shade which is the newest pan that I have in this palette and lastly this coral shade right here. So tons of pan in this palette and I have been enjoying wearing this but again the formula of these eyeshadows aren't my absolute favourite. Next up we have uh, an Urban Decay palette to talk about. This is my Naked palette and I have three pans in this palette currently. I have pan on Sin, Sidecar and Half Baked and one of those I had pan on this year. I had pan on Sidecar. I also had this in my Panos eyeshadows and I actually had it um, simultaneously with Satin Taupe and I love pairing those shades together. This one is just a little bit lighter and more kind of and glittery and I really really love this shade it was actually one of my favorite shades in this palette back in the day um, and I'm happy to have some pan showing on that one now. Next up we have another Urban Decay palette this one is my Naked Ultimate Basics palette and if you have been following along my panels eyeshadows project you know this shade um, and it took very very long for me to pan on it but it is Faith from this eyeshadow palette right there and um, this took me over 50 uses to pan on so it was a very very long process but um, Urban Decay mattes are very tightly pressed so that kind of explains it and their pans are also very deep so the pan is not very big but it is there and um, this palette is not my favorite I have talked about that before and um, I'm happy to have it because it has so kind of a lot of nice matte shades but if I were to cut down my eyeshadow palette collection and uh, this one would probably be one of the first to go so next up let's move on to Colourpop. I have the Dream Street palette from Colourpop in collaboration with Kathleen Lights. Um, I actually have two pans in this and I hit both of those this year, both from my Panos Eyeshadows project. The first um, pan that I hit this year in this palette is Mermaid Boy which is this dark blue shimmery shade up here. And then after that I rolled in Sweet Dreams which is this one here um, and I hit pan on that one as well. Um, I do really love this palette but I feel like I don't love it as much as a lot of other people. Uh, but it is beautiful. I just feel like I kind of lost some love in this um, after panning this shade because Sweet Dreams wasn't really my favourite. It was very very glittery and it easily blended away to nothing so I had to use it with a glitter glue all the time and I still feel like it wasn't very impactful but I'm happy to have gotten some more use out of this one this year because I didn't reach for it nearly enough last year um, and yeah it's just good to see some use in this palette. Next up we have the She palette from Colourpop. My actually look a bit different because I decided to combine two of my eyeshadow palettes in here. So this is actually a combination of 
the Element of Surprise and the original Shea palette, so that's why it looks a bit different. Um, I had pan on two shades in here this year, uh, which are these two mattes up here. Um, this one I had pan on last year, and both of these purpley shades are from the Element of Surprise palette, but this one is from the original Shea. I think this is the uh, shade Dear originally, and yeah, I had pan on both of these through my uh, panels I chose project. So I have a few more eyeshadow palettes to talk about. Let's move on to Juvia's Place because I've hit the pan on quite a few eyeshadows from Juvia's Place this year. And the first palette that I have is the Magic Mini palette. I actually have eyeshadows in all three of these palettes that are in different projects. So if you don't want spoilers, please skip ahead again. But in here I have two pans uh, and that is the shade Vi and Buso, which is these um, silver and green shades. Both of these I have pan on in my panels eyeshadows and the shade Vi was the first pan I hit um, within my Juvia's Place palettes and I was actually surprised because a lot of people say it takes a long time to pan on Juvia's Place eyeshadows but I really didn't find it to be that way. Um, I feel like maybe these smaller pans are um, less shallow but I actually have another pan to show you which I still agree with that it doesn't take too long. Um, I have been working on another matte eyeshadow from Juvia's Place though and that is taking a bit longer because the um, matte is really really hardly pressed so potentially that is what people are referring to but I feel like the pans aren't too deep in these shades but yeah I have two pans in this palette. So the next one is the Juice palette which is where the larger pans come in. So the one that I had pan on in here is Berry Moose which is this one here and again I don't feel like the pans are very deep but um, this shade was very kind of um, soft and crumbly and I was had to be very gentle with it to not pick up too much product so it didn't take too long to pan on but I'm actually currently working on crepes right here and that one is definitely a more harder press but I still feel like I'm getting a decent dip in it um, even only after using it for one month so um, that is what I have pan on in my dupe palette. And then lastly we have the Masquerade Mini Palette um, and in here I have one quite fresh pan and that is Dahlia right here. This is another one that is uh, in my panel's eyeshadows, it's actually still in so I'm gonna roll that out next update which is gonna be really exciting. Um, but yeah, um, this one took me not too long to hit pan on again but it wasn't really my favourite shade because I don't wear these blues that often. But it was fun to play around with especially now in quarantine. I'm happy to have pan on this eyeshadow as well. So we actually only have two more palettes to go through. The next one is my Tom Ford quad in the shade Golden Mink. And I had another um, eyeshadow in here from my Panos eyeshadows. And that is this dark brown right here. These pans are so, so deep. Um, when I was using this, I was just so surprised every day that I didn't hit pan on it. But I hope you can kind of see there how deep they are. Um, I do really love these quads, but they are getting a bit old. And when using this eyeshadow, um, I could kind of tell so I feel like I need to put more effort into using my two Tom Ford cards um, and potentially even declare them soon because yeah I can just tell that the formula has changed a bit. And then the final pan that I have is from one of my Anastasia palettes and um, again this is a spoiler from my Panos eyeshadows but I actually hit pan on the shade Teak in here um, and that is this one right here. This one is actually quite a new palette in my collection. I got it for Christmas last year, so I only had it for about six months, um, and I haven't played with it enough yet, but by using this shade in my panel's eyeshadows, I got to play with the palette as a whole a bit, which was really good, and I do really, really love this palette. Um, but yeah, that is my final pan. So there you guys was all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Otherwise, I hope you're having an amazing day, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye guys.